everybody. Welcome back. It's Annie, Joyfield Stitcher, here on Floss Tube and on Instagram. And I am here for Floss Tube number seven. I think we're on seven now. Floss Tube number seven. Today is Friday, June 28th, 2019. We are almost at end of June. It's crazy. And I thought I would try, because we're a little earlier in the day today filming. Um, we're in my dining room area in my house and it's where I currently have set up my sewing machine right here my serger over there and um, notice I did say my dining room however it's not currently functioning as my dining room we have a breakfast area that we eat at and it's just the three of us so um, my dining room is a great flat space to be able to have my cutting board which is underneath me and I had some notes that I made today, so I wanted to go ahead and kind of have a different setup. I want to see if I like this or not. I like the lighting a little bit better already. I am filming again this week on my iPad. So, let's chat a little bit about some stitching and some other things. So, what have I been up to this week? Well, this week, I've been stitching a lot. <laughs> um, last week, I accomplished quite an insane amount of stitching. Okay, I don't want to say insane. But a very large amount of stitching for me. Um, I don't know if I actually did the calculations on how many stitches I did last week, but it was a lot. And I've done a quite a bit this week already as well. And the reason why I'm filming a little bit earlier um, today than I usually do is one, I would like to get this up a little bit earlier. But two, uh, I just realized when I was looking through all of my stuff in my um, spreadsheets that I have yet to watch Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And Sunday's the last day of June. So I need to get that done. And I finished a year long task today. So I'm kind of like in a, do I start another one? And you can't double dip. So that being said, I have some stitching I had scheduled for this weekend that doesn't count for anything magical stitches. So I felt like it'd be a perfect opportunity to watch that tonight. So after I get done here, I'm gonna order myself some food and get comfy after I eat and stitch them. So, what did I do this week? Well, I've done some organizing. I'm currently today, well, okay, over the weekend, I kind of went through all my fancy flosses and got them organized by color. So, I plan to do a bit of like a craft room tour or craft storage tour at some point. It's not ready yet. I'm still in the, the throes of all of that. I also was reading and realized that I have been storing my cross stitch fabric not in a very good way. I, you know, they ship sometimes from people in little like plastic bags and I've been leaving them in the plastic bags and just folding the sticky part over so it, I feel like it breathes. That's not the way you're supposed to be doing it apparently. You're supposed to be laying them flat. Well, I had to wrap, wrap my head around that. Well, I have a wide Alex drawer unit from Ikea that's currently housing some other crafty things. So I have rolled it into the middle of my living room. And while I've been watching TV, I've been emptying it out. And then I'm going to dedicate a drawer um, for each count of fabric that I have. So my hope is I'll be able to share that with you when I do some of my storage tour. You know, storage with my craft stuff is ever evolving. Right? Okay. Um, let's see. I have update on my classroom. I have not moved in yet. I, you know, I had said two weeks ago or so that they were in the process of, you know, renovating a room to make into my new classroom. And so, so far they've put in custom cabinetry, which looks awesome. A custom countertop with said custom cabinetry, which looks awesome. But we're waiting on carpet. And then we'll be ready to move in. Because next week everybody's off because of the holiday. And then the next week um, would be ideal because then we're out of town for a couple of weeks. Um, so anyway, just update on that. Um, oh, I went I went to the Goodwill and I found two, two frames um, and I don't have them by me, but they're really cool. Um, one's like a circle that had a mirror in it and I enlisted the help of my husband because I realized it had screws, so it should have been able to pop the mirror out. Well, the screws came out great, but then the mirror was like glued in, or the, the back plate with the mirror on it was glued in. Well, he managed to somehow pry that nonsense apart and not shatter the mirror, and I was like, ha, 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 
good thing because it wouldn't have been seven years of bad luck on me. It would have been on him because he's the one doing it. Um, and then I got kind of a goldish one. It was a dollar something. And I'm thinking it might work for the finish that I have today. So we'll see. I'm not sure about that. And then I've done a lot of planning. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I had um, written out a lot of my plans. So I have since transferred those into my spreadsheets. And I have some of those I'll share with you a little bit today because I printed them out so I could remember because I'm going to talk a little bit about plans at the end. Um, so moving on. There wasn't really any Q&A from my last video, so if you have a question for me, ask me. In terms of stitching, I'm intermediate, beginner intermediate. I've been stitching for 20 plus years, but like if you're wanting to know about fractionals and things like that, I don't really pick patterns traditionally with those because I don't traditionally stitch anymore on linen or even weave. I stitch on Ada. And so those are a little bit more challenging with fractional stitch. So let's talk about what I've been watching. So on Floss Tube, I have been watching. She's just so soothing. <laughs> I love her. She's so soothing. Um, Michelle Bindi Stitchy. She's very well loved. And I've been catching up on a bunch of her videos. And she actually inspired a change in the finish I have to share. Yes, I have a finish. <laughs> and you might be surprised with which one it is. Um, I've also been catching up on a lot of Stitch and Mommy's videos. I love her too. She, I wish I could stitch in hand like she does. And her stitches are just beautiful. I mean, she's, she's, she's like, they're perfect every time. And then one of my other ones that I just recently found, and she shouted me out, so I'm going to shout her out again. I shouted her out on my blog last week is Amanda May at Ardith Designs. I love her video, she's so fun. When I watch her and my daughter's around, she's like, she's so giggly, she sounds so happy. And I'm like, she does sound very happy. And um, one thing this, with her la latest video, she and her post on Instagram, that she was talking about Flossmas and Christmas in July. And I'm like, what is this? I need to know about this. So she kind of inspired me to go on a little Instagram search and a floss tube search and so yeah she's awesome she's fun so let's get into a finish and some lips so let me get out my information on my finish because I did type this up because I want to make sure so are we ready so I finished Mary and Bright this was a sal at the time Mary and Bright by Ships Manor so let me give you some of the details on this. So let me leave it right here. Okay. I stitched in all the called fours, two over one, and this is on 18 count navy blue Ada. I started this on April 5th of this year of 2019, and I finished it today, <laughs> June 28th, 2019. Um, so the day, the amount of days I actually worked on it, because I went back and I looked at all the days I worked on it, um, was 14 days. And I did not actually stitch on this a single bit in May. So this was only in April and June. And I did a total of 3,785 stitches. Uh, it seems like a lot more <laughs> than, it, than that it ended up being. So one change that I made is, um, and this is where the inspiration from Michelle over at Bindi Stitchy, is I decided to stitch my initials A, C, V in a different form. A different floss so um, whereas the rest were stitched in Pirates Beauty and uh, Bumpkin I believe were the two so kind of goldish I stitched A C and V in the variegated loose lolly to give it a little bit so it's not super like blah, blatant like ACV but I like that they have just that little bit of variegation in them and those are my initials um, she actually is even crafty enough to change out her initials to put them in order um, because hers are MFG I think and so she moves the M up and moves them around I I'm lucky that mine are in order ACV and then down here under the little lamp I put um, or the candle I put 19 so it's finished and I love it this is such a fun stitch um, towards the end I got to where I was doing some color completing over here, I would work specifically on motifs, but once I got to, you know, where I was last week, I tried to do color completing. Um, and actually, I had this pegged for a year-long challenge, 
and I had already marked the thousand and one stitches or whatever I ended up realizing when I was working with the gold color the pirates booty color <laughs> that all most of the alphabet was in that so I went ahead and continued on so I think I hit my year long yesterday with like a thousand and thirty seven is when I took the picture and then finished up today with another like close to 300 or a little over 300 stitches so it's done and I love it and again I just think everything that Eric over at Chips Manor does is pretty phenomenal and his flosses are amazing as well to work with so this is a fun one I'm still just baiting if I'm going to frame it or do something else with it but for now I'm loving it so yay okay so finishes yay gotta finish as my one, no, that was not my one and only finish in June. I had two other finishes in June. That's right, I had three finishes. Um, I might do a wrap up next week of June in terms, because obviously June's not over, so I don't have my total stitches. I don't have all of that or the, all the projects I worked on. But I think I had three finishes in June. I think I had Strawberries and Stripes, Hello Beautiful, and did I finish Hello Beautiful in May? I don't know. I'll update you on that next week. But I, I did finish that. Yay. So speaking of, before we get to it, speaking of, you know, I had worked on Strawberries and Stripes. If you have watched my previous videos, I feel like a broadcaster, like, done. Okay. Um, you may know that I participated in a local um, swap. Um, and it was a summer patriotic stitching swap. And so I sent off Strawberries and Stripes, which I had finished as on that um, galvanized candle holder. Um, and it was like an interchangeable because I used a magnet in the base and then I put a washer. I glued a washer on the bottom um, so that she could take it in and out. She said, no, no, no. I do patriotic all year long. Excuse my dog coughing in the background. So I got mine from the other local person. And so in my pack was a lot of stuff. Um, I've already put the pattern. There was a pattern in the way there, which was a Brooks Books patriotic pattern. Um, and there was some fabric. And I think it was, I don't remember. Um, I think some Fiddler's Cloth and some linen. The linen might be being passed along, swapped with somebody else. But what I did keep in this pouch, so I got this pouch this project bag, which I like. I think this is gonna go on vacation with me to hold some of my whips that I'm taking with me. She sent me three Week Star Works and they're kind of a prim patriotic colorway. So you've got um, oil cloth, glacial melt, and Carolina Cecile. Oh, glacial melt is what I'd stitched one of my houses in. Um, one of my houses is in Prairie Cooler. So I like those. Those are really pretty. She sent me, um, I don't remember if I put this in there or not, or she just is psychic and knows, but I have a thing for Ray Dunn. So she sent me this keychain that says it all started with a mug. Isn't that the truth? Is that not the truth? One time I might show you my level of Ray Dunn-ness. And then she sent me the cutest stitch thing. And it says DFW Stitchers. Um, and she actually sent me the sweetest note how she had worked on this with her daughter, her like 10 or 11 year old daughter, and that she had stitched this with no pattern. No pattern! She created this and stitched it with no pattern. So how cute is that? Little houses, fireworks in 2019. So I think I'm going to put a cute little, I had some cute red and white check ribbon that I used on mine. So I think I'm going to put some ribbon on it and hang it up. So, so fun. I loved it. And I think they're going to do a fall one. And then maybe like one around Christmas. So I'm excited about that. I liked stitching for someone else. That was kind of exciting. So, before we get into whips, I realized I need to go grab something because I have a bit of a announcement. Okay. So, this past week, I got an email from YouTube. It said, congratulations, you have hit 100 subscribers. And I was like, what? You've got to be kidding me. I'm like so over the moon, friends. Like, that's amazing. That's amazing to me that there's 100 people who have decided to not only watch one of my videos, but subscribe. Like, that's pretty cool. So, 
I thought in honor of that. Plus, I'm over 300 on Instagram now, which again, I was like, what? Like, amazing. I was a little shrill, not gonna lie. So I thought I would do a little bit of a fun subscriber giveaway. So here's the deal. Um, I went into my stash and found some things that I love, but would love to pass on to others and to say thank you for being a part of this, this really cool journey I'm on here. So kind of some basic rules. Don't say giveaway. Don't say giveaway. You have to be 18. Um, I will open to U.S. and international. And I'm going to keep it open for about two weeks. So I will announce the winners right before I kind of go out of town um, and try to get those taken care of. Um, it may only be like a week and a half, actually, now to think about it. Because I'd like to be able to get everything in the mail before we go out of town. So let me show you what I have. And I'm going to tell you the word to comment. So yeah. And hey, invite one of your buddies over. If these are not like your jam, if these charts and two pieces of fabric are not your jam invite your buddy over tell them to comment i want to whatever so the first one and this i bought and i was like i love it and then i went oh it's beyond my it's above my pay grade <laughs> it's above my stitching grade um this unfortunately has some more sophisticated stitches than what i'm capable of doing but it's gorgeous, and I would love to stitch it at some point, but I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to somebody else. So this is the Drawn Thread, and this is Spring Arbor, and it's got a bit of a glare. It's really pretty. So if you would like to stitch this, say, I would like to stitch the arbor. That's one. I've got four. The other chart is a Ship's Manor, and this is Ida Rose's Garden. And this is charted in um, Gentle Arts or DMC. Oh, and I should have said that the drawn thread is, it's charted in needlepoint silk how, and uh, one Karen Water Lilies. However, um, those are pretty easy to find conversions. So Ship's Manor, Ida Rose's Garden. So if you would like to stitch this, say I would like to stitch the garden. And obviously I'd love to when you say I would like to stitch this, I would like to whatever. Like, Send me, a shot, send me a hey, what's up? Okay, so two pieces of fabric. Um, one is one that I dyed, and one is one that I got from my favorite, one of my favorite shops, but it's not one of her hand dyed. So I got a hand dyed and a not hand dyed. So this is a 32 count Belfast uh, petite point with raw and red, and it is a nine by 11. So it'd be cute for some little ornaments. So I would like to stitch on the dots. I would like to stitch on the dots. And then the other one is, like I said, this is one that I dyed, I think. Now I'm wondering. No, actually, I think this might be from my favorite dyer. Um, I'm not sure. But it's a really pretty um, piece. It's kind of got a rustic vibe to it. I think this is from, I think this is from Misty. But Misty hand dyed fabric. So lucky you, because um, her stuff's phenomenal, and now I'm going to get some more people addicted, and then I'm going to have a harder time. So it's approximately, I'm using my cutting board right now, approximately a 12 by 12, and I believe this is an 18 count. It's either a 16 or an 18 count Ada. So I would like to stitch the Ada. So again, I would like to stitch the Arbor. I would like to stitch the garden. I would like to stitch the dots. And I would like to stitch the Ada. So again, about two weeks, week and a half, two weeks. Yeah. So thank you again. Thank you. If you are new here today, for whatever reason, maybe somebody said, hey, go watch that crazy girl over there. Talking with her little Texas accent, saying y'all a whole lot and hold your horses. Thank you. Crazy, crazy here too. Welcome. And if you are returning for another another installment of my life as a stitcher, I appreciate it. And I think you're awesome. And I, if you're not making videos, go make some and tell me about it so I can go watch you. Yeah, right? Okay. So in addition 
into watching an awful lot of floss tube at night. I kind of have a little, I, I add them to my playlist and then I just hit enter and I let it play. And then just do that. I restarted like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago maybe. I restarted watching Downton Abbey in advance of the movie coming out in September. I'm so excited. I'm a huge Downton Abbey fan. And I actually never watched the last season because I was just so distraught when the last season came out and they said, it's the last season. I was like, not yet. So I am about to be on the precipice of watching the last season. And so I'm like, Ugh. and then I won't be able to wait for the movie. So I will probably end up watching it all over again. Truth. I mean, we're going to talk truth now. All right. So let's get into some whips. Some works in progress because I only had one finish, so I got a lot of whips. So, um, after my video last week, I spent some more time finishing a year-long task that I had started. So, this project is in my travel, cutesy travel, like Route 66 fabric pouch that I made with some cute little fun bunting on the inside. This is my USA map. This is my one I am stitching, and as we travel places as a family, we're going to fill in those states. So, I think when I last showed you, I was somewhere around Minnesota, maybe somewhere like that. And then I've gotten over here, um, I'm kind of stitching the whole border, and then I'm putting, putting in where, like, the state lines are, the state boundaries. So, but up here, when you get into New England, they're also kind of in together like puzzle pieces. It just made sense to go ahead and stitch this. This has a little over a thousand stitches in it. And um, so yeah, I've got more to do on that. But I needed a break from the navy blue on blue. Um, I am using this for the year long test, or I used it because it's the thousand stitches are already done. Uh, on the paths to Hogsmeade, there's seven paths to Hogsmeade and I kind of made the connection that those are shown on the Marauders map and this is a map. Um, it's very loose, it's a very loose connection. And then I am stitching this in a color and cotton. This was from a mystery grab bag. It actually reminds me a little bit of the blue that just, the prim blue that just came out with the Stars and Stripes box, which let me just tell you how disappointed I am I did not get that. Womp womp. Anyway, and oh, I should have said this is being stitched on an 18 count Ada from Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics. It was a um, fabric of the month, I think for May. It's called Big Sky. So yay. That was a good year-long task done. So then we, I got into, I put that away. I lied. I got out on Sunday. I got out merry and bright. And I put in maybe about 300 stitches in that on Sunday. And then on Monday, I put that away because homework can start on Monday. And this week's homework had all to do with kind of the last bit of the book because this was the last week of homework. So I'm going to kind of tell you what the tasks were and what I used for them. Oh, and I got all my projects put in my project bags. I'm so excited. And they're all in my cart by my stitchy spot. So the first task was Harry and Cedric reached the goblet at the same time. So you had to stitch 200 stitches on objects that were touching. So I am using my um, tree farm for this, my Prairie Schooler Christmas tree farm. Let me pull up a picture for you. I didn't think I needed to show you one for USA map because, you know, USA map. That is not what I needed on my other one. Let's try again. Where are you, tree farm? There you are. So this is how Prairie Schooler charted their pattern. Oh, good grief. Well, let it blown out, but you get the idea. No, you really don't get the idea. There we go. So we've got houses, trees, some animals, a little Santa. And it's in a lot of red and green and brown and gray. I don't rule that way. I mean, I might roll that way on one project, but I think I need I need more. So this is in my ornamental trees pouch with some cute coordinating fabric. And this is being stitched on an under the sea fabrics 18 count Ada in Ice Princess. And so I got 200 stitches put in. here. I finished off the orange house and the roof. I This tree is touching this house 
and I stitched this one in one of my darker greens. I think this is Week Dye Work, Weeks Dye Works Lucky. And then I started the next house, which is in, let me get into my bag of tricks here. That is going to be, it's a blue, Midnight Ocean by Victorian Motto. So this project has a lot, a lot, a lot. Oh, good grief. They're all over the place. A lot of floss bags. But some of these only are going to use like a very small amount to um, stitch the section. So, um, get them all back in there. So I'm loving this project. I'm loving how this is stitching up on the fabric. I went ahead and I didn't count these stitches, but I went ahead and back stitched in this cute little fence. And I used the same door color for the fence. Just trying it out. I figured I'd try it on that one. So, um, I'm hoping to get back to that soon when I talk plans. Um, I will tell you a little bit about some of my next month's plans. And I think this is slotted for something. I can't exactly remember what. I spent a lot of time on this in June. It doesn't really look like it. It's a pretty weighty project. Um, so, I'm hopeful to get some more time in July. That could be for Christmas in July a little bit. All right. So, then tasks two and five I use the same project for. So for task two, it said he who could not be named attacked at the tournament, 200 stitches in gray or black. And then task five was Professor Mad-Eye Moody's Deceit, stitch 200 stitches in an ingredient found in Polyjuice Potion. So I used a quilting bee for both of these. Um, my connection was a quilting bee. The legs and some of the other detailing is stitched in Gentle Arts Raven, but I am stitching it in DMC 310. So that's my black. And then this reminds me of lace, uh, lace wing fly, which is an ingredient in the Polyjuice Potion. So I am, this is in my Tula case, which is the bee, the funky bee. So I put in a little over 400 stitches in this. And the wings are everything now. Um, I loved them with just the Mountain Mist, but then I added in the stitching of Lagoon and it's incredible. It's incredible. Makes them pop. And then I like the addition of the black here. I'll, I'll be interested to see when I add in the final color in these what they ultimately look like. And I love the legs. They're so cool. I mean, Janine is such a fantastic designer. She did such a good job on this. I mean, it's such a good pattern. It's fun to stitch. It stitches up really quickly. And this is on um, 16 Count Ada. By Picture This Plus in Heartland, which is a new color for 2019. So yeah, I like where that's coming along too. I think this is also slotted um, for some things this month. And then the last three tasks, because there were six tasks, I believe. Am I right? Yes, because the la two of the tasks were only 100 stitches in one point apiece. So tasks three four and six i used this project so for three which was cedric's passing stitch 100 stitches on a grave or graveyard scene four was harry's parents appeared to help him 200 stitches on a project that needed help fabric thread suggestions whatever and then harry donated his winnings to the twin to open their joke shop 100 stitches on something that makes you laugh so this was a bit of a stretch i really wanted to stitch on this project this week one was easy, two were a stretch. So this is HL Moth. Let me pull up my picture. I show this a lot because it's one of my most, most favorite curtain charts. It's hard to say because I like them all. So that is HL Moth, or HL's Moth by Kathy Barrick. This is in my Magical Moth bag. And this is part of the, I'm doing a Magical Moth stitch along. This is being stitched on 16 count Veteris by Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics. So, the my husband helped me kind of whittle down some of the, the color choices. So that's kind of was an easy one. That was the easy task. And then um, why it makes me laugh is if you watched one of my prior videos, you will have heard me try <laughs> mention it still makes me laugh. Mention how I had attempted this Ada stitcher had attempted to stitch on 40 count. I still cannot bring myself to come back to this just yet. 
just yet because I'm afraid when I start to rip out the eight stitches that look like nonsense on there. Just looks like a big blob of boogers. A lie. Looks like French knots, actually, is what it looks like. Teeny tiny, teeny tiny French knots. So I haven't come back to this yet, but it makes me laugh because I was literally thinking, I can do this. And I went, I can't do that. And then the last one was, okay, a grave or a graveyard scene. I was like, okay, do I have anything in my in my Google Drive, like patterns I've purchased or whatever, that has a grave or a graveyard? I did have one. And it was Lila Studios, ha Lila Studios Halloween Quaker has one. No. Yes. Maybe. There's another one. Oh, Jardin Privé. I have Patchwork Halloween. I was like, I don't want to start another project right now. Just for 100 stitches in a grave. So I was like, I'm going to weave a tail. I'm going to take inspiration from all the weeks of watching Jessie Marie and her amazing storytelling capabilities. And I'm going to make a story. So I said that this reminded me, and it really does, like this is not a lie. Um, if you've ever looked up a death head moth, so let me pull you up a picture because these are pretty cool looking. A death head moth. So remember what HL moth looks like. So this is a death head moth. They do exist in real life. And this is one example of one. There's several. And I said that this project, HL's Moth, reminds me of a death head moth. And you can't be in a grave or in the graveyard without being dead. So a dead head moth. I, I feel like at this point, I'm likely to not get the one point, but I have a hundred more stitches in this and it was what I wanted to stitch on. So, what ifs? No skin off my nose. I got a hundred stitches in it. So I am still working my way through all of the classic Colorworks Tufted Yellow. I guess I'm kind of like a, the anticipation kind of a person, like the anticipation of, of when are the colors going to come in. Like this makes me excited. Like putting all of this in and knowing that these are going to be cool details that are going to just like immediately pop when you add the other colors. I can't wait. I cannot wait. And also, I will tell you, this is a possibly a project that's going to get stitched not once, not twice, but three times. Because I really would like to still try to get it stitched on the 40 count. I think I just need better lighting. Some, like, jeweler's magnifiers. And, like, a lot of patience. But... And when I was looking through the hashtag for um, Magical Moth Cell, I saw one that was being done in blue. And it's amazing. And now I can't remember. I might have saved it on Instagram. Because if you have not seen this, if you are not part of this cell, you need to go check it out immediately. And this stitcher is genius. I think I saved it. I'm hopeful I saved it. I didn't save it. But that's okay because I can probably find it. So what I was saying is it has inspired me because of my love of everything blue to almost like have the original stitch them on a similar fabric or the same fabric because I have a metric ton of this fabric because it's beautiful. Okay. Magical moth. Magical moth. So. So it has inspired me to do something cool or maybe I like put them side by side when I frame them. I'm not sure. I have to find it in here. Because, I mean, seriously, folks, inspiring. Inspiring, inspiring. Like this one right here. Uh, amazing. That is actually, it is Kismet. And she's the kind of coordinator of this whole amazing endeavor. There's mine. I know it was after my post. Oh, I can't find it now. Oi. Well, anywho. It was amazing. I was thoroughly inspired by it. And so now, yeah, I'm going to stitch it again. I'm already planning ahead. I haven't even, like, really hit, like, the, ugh. oh, and somebody else finished it and put their initials at the bottom. So I've got to figure out if that is something that is like included in the pattern because I haven't gotten that far, I guess, to really like for certain tell you that there's other letters 
but I love that, so I, I plan on doing that. Okay, so that was really, and then I went back to Mary and Bright and finished that up. So, and I finished that today. So now, moving forward, so let's chat a tiny bit about um, some plans. I'm going to stop it here so I can start a new clip. So are we ready to talk some plans? Because I am pumped about July. This is possibly like the most prepared I've been. And I think that's a lot of, because I have a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> I've been doing these things instead of doing things like cleaning my house. That's coming. Unfortunately, that's what it's going to be. Less fun. So, okay. In looking through and watching Amanda May's latest video, I was like, Christmas in July. One, it's insanely hot in Texas in July. So anything that can remind me of cooler temps, that's awesome. And so, I was like, what am I going to use as my focus? And I was like, well, I could use Prairie Schooler. And I think I have that slotted for some other stuff somewhere down the line. Oh, yeah, I have it slotted for two. Okay, this is why I said I didn't think I wanted to use it for Christmas in July. Because I have it slotted for two extra credit tasks, and I'll get to those in a minute. And I was thinking, okay, well, maybe I should start something else. I need to do a stitch for my mom and sing a sampler, which is also for her, is not Christmas themed. And it's nowhere going to be close by Christmas. Like, mm -mm. it's huge. It's going to take me years. It might be more like a birthday present in two years. <laughs> so I figured I've had this pattern sitting. I saw this at my LNS back in like mm, December or January. No, maybe it was before that. And I saw it on the wall and I was like, yes, amazing. And they were like, well, that's a, I think they said it was a stitch along on Plum Street Samplers website. And I was like, okay, well, do you think it's still there? And they're like, last time we checked. And I was like, okay, awesome. So I am going to focus my Christmas in July stitching. This is, um, oh my gosh, my brain just drew a complete blank. This is Mary's sampler, and this is by Plum Street Samplers. And as I have done the last two weeks, I'm going to do um, some show notes on my blog, and I will link that below. And if this is still available, I will link to it. it this is the dark color way, and this just happens to be the picture I have along with the patterns. Um, and they have it by the week. It has a scripture that goes with it. And it was meant to stitch along each week over like a nine week period leading up to Christmas. And there's a light color way and a dark color way. So um, I haven't decided which fabric. I have already gotten the flosses. I think this was done in hand dyed. I think I went ahead and kitted it with DMC. I also believe mine does not have God with us and it's a laid out slightly different. There was one that was like a more involved stitching every week or a less involved. And I personally like the layout of the less involved. So, um, that's going to be my Christmas in July. Um, and then there's also a hashtag that's going along with the Christmas in July hashtag and all that is, um, it is Kismet is doing one because her birthday's around Christmas time and she always feels bad asking people to, you know, do a stitch along. She was sharing on her Instagram about this and she is going to do a Kismas in July so you can kind of add that hashtag if you're doing Christmas. Okay, so moving on. I apparently have gone nuts and think I can do 87 challenges in July. In addition to magical stitches, which I'll get to in a minute, I am also going to be attempting semi-sane bingo. Both an insane card and a sane card. Now, sane, you don't have to do anything. Insane, if your numbers get pulled, you have to do 50 stitches in that number. Um, every, I think it's 48 hours that you go without stitching it, it adds so it can really accumulate quickly. You have to check your numbers every day. So I, um, went through, this is, I took this as a screenshot from my numbers spreadsheet and I went through my projects. One, it is in DMC. Now you can ask for a conversion, um, what do they call that? Oh, a conversion approval. And so I have one project on here that I am stitching in um, a Victorian motto that she provided a conversion and they approved that. Um, I know that in order to participate in bingo, you have to complete the bingo prep event, which closes on Sunday. So if you are interested in Simi Sane Stitcher's bingo, I will link it. 
and head over there and complete the bingo prep, which is basically picking your numbers for your card cards. And um, so yeah, I am doing one insane card. I think as a newbie, I could do two. No, maybe it's only one of each. I'm not sure. I didn't choose to do more than one insane card. Mm -mm. No. So we'll see how this goes. I don't want to abandon it, but we'll see. So, unfortunately, this also means now that I'm thinking about it, that when I travel, I'm going to have to travel with all of these lids. Boy, I didn't think about that. Okay, we're doing a, a gallon Ziploc bag, and they're just getting bare bones. And I may only take the, the project and the color I need. That might be what I have to take. I guess it means only 50 stitches. Okay, so here's what I slotted out. So for B, I picked 5200, 347, 310, 336, and blanc, white. So I'm using, overall, I think I went through and figured out that I'm um, going to be using Halloween Town, which is Frosty Pumpkin Stitchery. Country Cottage, Needleworks Angels. I'm going to be showing that because it's a new start. Wizard of Pusheen. It's so cute. Hello Autumn, Risen, um, Fort Worth, Sing a Sampler, and Snowflakes. And this was literally, I was grasping at straws to find because most of my current projects are kitted in overdyes. So I did the best I could. I, I picked 550, 433, 553, 434, and 581. You'll see most of those are in my Fort Worth project. Over here, I've got 839, 807, a free space, 731, and 775. Again, a good variation. And then down here in G, 921, and these are all backwards. Yep. And then over here, this is my one I asked for a exemption, or not like an exemption, approval on, which is Snowflakes and Buttons is 3753. So, my hope is, is that each week I can do a little, I have considered for all my little things that are going to go on throughout the month, like bingo and Christmas in July, maybe doing like a week, a, like a daily short video. I don't know. We'll see. A Christmas in July slash bingo. Because that's a lot to cover in a weekly update. So, I'm going to think on that. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Okay, so this is the one that I am considering ditching. Not because I don't want to participate, because I love participating this month. But I am considering ditching a little bit because it's a lot. Between bingo, and I really want to play bingo. I did not get into casino last, last month, and that's okay. I did Letter of Fortune in May, and that was okay too. I really liked Monopoly. And I'll be excited for Monopoly to come around. I think I'm going to like Bingo. Um, those are all semi-same events. And so, I tried to when I went through my 24-hour. So, this is for 24-hour challenge. Is now doing monthly challenges. And so, last month, they, you needed to spell out 24 and have a project for each. And you set a goal for each. So, this month, there's two options. There's the one with the acrostic, which is team two, four hours. And again, you select project for each with a goal. And I've set all of my goals at 120 stitches. That's pitiful, I know, but I'm just not sure with all of this other. And at that point, honestly, it may be the thing that gets dropped in the end. We'll see how much my mental capacity can handle. And then the second one is a new one this month, and they took some of the funny, like, July holidays and then you find they would pick 12 of them and find something that fits with them and you have to either stitch 120 stitches or 24 minutes my brain works better in stitch count because I can mark it um but some people do time so I try what I try to do is thinking about what my my extra credits for magical stitches which I'm gonna get to in a minute my bingo well no and I don't think you can double dip bingo with no no oh wait See, I'm already all confused. And what my bingo focuses are, what my new starts are, and what I'm planning to take with me on my vacation. Which now I'm just realizing I'm going to take an insane amount of things with me on vacation. Um, I tried to pick some projects and fit them in as many as I could. So there's some overlap, but there's not a great amount of overlap. Because my, my thought was for vacation, 
because we're gone a, a Monday through the following Wednesday late. And so that means I'm going to have a, a homework release that I'm not going to possibly be prepared for. So I figured I'd make sure I had at least one of my extra credit projects with me. And I thought, okay, well, that could also be a week I focus on those 24-hour challenges. So for that, I have Tree Farm, um, Carrot Forest, Dinah's Garden, HL Moth, because you know I'm just loving stitching on that, Bluebirds, Quilting Bee, and then I pulled in some of the ones for my extra credit focus. So, that being said, let's talk about stitching extra credit. I have not even dipped my finger into reading extra credit yet. And to be perfectly honest, I think I may just tackle those as they go. And if I find a book that fits it, fits a task, awesome. I know for sure I'm going to, now this is over two months, uh, listen to, I have the Audible version of um, Order of Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix. I really like that book. It's huge. I don't remember what the audio file length is, but it's a lot of numbers. It's for sure in the double digits because I think Goblet of Fire was easily 13 or 14 hours. So I think we'll leave it too much for that. I know that I'll do that, but then beyond that, I'm not. I've really planned in May and June, and with the end of the school year and now being in kind of a more summer swing of routine, I didn't have as much time to do my audiobooks. And so my reading extra credit, I probably only got half. I got Harry Potter, and then I got half of the other tasks. So now March, April, I got them all because I had a lot. I had time where I could listen, you know, while I was eating lunch or whatever. Okay, and Downton Abbey has been taking up my time lately. So for the stitching extra credit, because I feel like this is my best contribution to my to the Ravenclaw house. For the first one, which is work on your largest whip for Grop, um, I went by the area because a lot of mine do not have an actual stitch count. And so by area, Carrot Forest is my largest one with 32,231 area stitches it's not full coverage um so i just did my best guess on that um for number two work on a whip with a feather or a bird on it well that was like immediately bluebird sal work on a whip that is a portrait or has a portrait in it and they clarified it could be a person or a pet that's in it so i'm going to use dinah's garden strawberries i guess i could show you these in case you are brand new to me and these are brand new to you because sometimes I call things things that are not the right name or a shortened version of the name. So let's go back. This is Carrot Forest. It is by Al Forest Embroidery. Um, Bluebird. And the picture that I have of Bluebird Sal is not a complete picture. It is just a snippet of it. But it's done in all blues and whites. And I had a random floating around floss, floss away bag with B5200. Now I'm wondering if it actually goes with this project. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, Dinah's Garden Strawberries, which I do think I have. This is a Lila Studio. Oh, and Bluebird Sal was um, Ship Scanner. And so I will be putting in some stitches into that for two tasks. Um, Bluebirds is two tasks. Carrot Forest is two tasks. Um, okay, so then moving on. Work on a whip with a magical creature, not a witch or wizard. And so I clarified, is a fairy a magical creature? And they said, absolutely. So I'm going to be starting, and I'm not starting this until July 24th. That is my daughter's wrote, birth date is the 24th of the month. I'm going to be starting. This is my first beaded project that will hopefully get finished. This is Nora Corbett's The Fairy. And I'm going to be doing some color converting. I am going to keep the main dress color, but I am going to be changing up the V and the beads. Um, so then moving on, task five is stitches in one flame color, either yellow, red, or orange. So I am using Carrot Forest for that because orange carrots. Number six, work on something that has a Christmas theme, Prairie School or Christmas Tree Farm. 
And I would have used Mary Sampler, except Mary Sampler is actually working for the whole thing will give me two year long tasks without like a stitch to spare. It's like literally 2,000 stitches exactly because I've worked it out. Number seven, work on something featuring things found in a forest. So we are going to do, we, we are going to do a Christmas tree farm again, refreshing memory, Christmas tree farm for that. And then number eight, stitch on something with a, with a spear, something with circles, spears, or glass, beads count, so V fairy. Number nine, stitch on something with flowers on it for petunia. And so I'm gonna use bluebird because bluebird has some really pretty flower motifs in it. Number 10, family item, birth sampler, something being stitched for a family member. And so I'm gonna use Dinah's Garden Strawberries. And I am actually stitching that for my daughter's room. She has a cute little strawberry wreath in her room and it's gonna go right next to it. And then number 11 is watch the order of the Phoenix while stitching, show a before and an after photo of your stitching. So I have those all planned out. They are not all um, marked yet. I usually try to go in and mark them so that when it gets to be, if I have to pull that for a homework or something, I know that that's already planned out and then I don't have to recount. So, okay, we've talked about in terms of, this was a lengthy plans one. We've talked about that. Now, I would like to go ahead and show you my new starts. I went ahead and showed you V-Fairy, but I do have three other for sure new starts planned. Um, so, and I think I've shown the, the conversions I'm doing on these. So the first one is Lizzie Kate, my to-do list for today. So I've done a complete color conversion. It's going to be on um, mint colored fabric or turquoise mint. Um, the other one I'm doing is another, this is the month of Lizzie Kate. Not really. Um, there are just some ABC Faith. I have a conversion, a slight conversion on this one. I am just, instead of using what was called for, I pulled something close from my own stash. V Fairy, obviously we'll get started this month on the 24th. And then the other one that I am for sure planning is Country Cottage Needleworks, and this is Angels. So this could also work for the Christmas stitching. To be perfectly honest, Country Cottage Needleworks may not get started if its numbers don't get pulled on bingo. It's possible Wizard Pusheen could get started because its numbers get pulled on bingo. Um, are there any other ones on there? So it could be a little bit in flux, so to speak. Um, Risen is one I started and then put in UFO status, and I think it was because I did not enjoy stitching on the fabric. I have picked new fabric, and it is waiting, if need be. And then everything else is already a current whip. So it could be that that CC and Angels gets, that's why I didn't put that as my Christmas in July. One, it's a time, it's not a very big project. I think it's like 50 by 60. And I wanted something that I for sure was going to start like on July 1st. So yeah, that's my first new start. Okay, so I actually have Mary Sampler for sure. My to-do list, which I'm starting on July 4th. Don't ask me why it's not patriotic. I just wanted to on July 4th because it's a reason to start about it. My birthday start, which is the 13th, I think is when I am starting ABC Faith, maybe. The 24th is V Fairy. The 19th is Angels, unless it gets started sooner because its numbers get pulled in bingo. Wizard Pusheen could be up in the air and all of that if its numbers get pulled in bingo. So, so I could theoretically have... Six new starts in July. Maybe I need to pick one more and say seven and seven. <gasps> I can come up with my own hashtag. Seven in July. I don't know about that. We'll see. All right, so this is going to be another long one, folks. Actually, it's really not. All that's left is stash, and I didn't get very much this week. And in fact, I realized. I had something that arrived as I was filming my video last week. So, this just means I get extra fabric to show you. So, let's start a new clip. Let me gather my stashy stuff and put it in front of me. And we'll be right back with some stash acquisitions. Alright, so let's talk stash. Um, So, last week, before I started 
or no, while I was filming, my mail was delivered. It was late that day. This is kind of a bummer. Um, but I had some fabrics arrive from my favorite fabric goddess, Misty, at Mystic Hand Dyed, Hand, Mystic Fabrics. She's on Facebook. She does Facebook sales on Sundays. She also does a fabric of the month. I don't think she has much available right now in terms of openings, but she does open occasionally if people have to back out. So it's always good to keep your ear to the ground. Um, so she had kind of a random assortment of things this last, this last, so this was two weeks ago, Sunday sale. So the first one I get, it kind of rem got, kind of reminds me a little bit of Big Sky, but it's a little bit lighter. It's kind of a pretty pale blue. This is a 16 count Ada in an 18 by 29 piece. She stitches all of her, she surges all of her 16 counts in black. So it has the black to help you in case this falls off or you take this piece off. So that's one piece I got. Then I got this one, and it's an 18 count. Let me open it up a little bit. It's folded a little bit different, so you don't get as good a deal. This is an 18 count. This is a pretty purpley. For some reason, my coloring has gotten terrible right this minute. That's a little bit better. Oh, that's a really good representation. So this is only an 18 by 21, but I mean, for the size of projects I do, I very rarely do gigantic projects. I have two kitted but I very rarely will do two large ones. And so it kind of, that will sometimes get me two projects. Um, this is another 18 count. I am a sucker for grays. I know some people are a sucker for kind of more the tans. I am a sucker for grays. And so this is a really pretty, if you want to get a good glimpse of it, gray. This is another 18 by 21 and this is an 18 count. And then the last one that she did, because the week prior to that, she had done some of her pride ones. And she actually uses her Adas as her drop cloths. Now I'm going to tell you, that's genius. Because she turned them around and sold them. And they are some of the coolest fabrics I've seen. So, And they were very inexpensive. So this is a 14 by 18 piece. This is a 16 count. And this is one of her drop cloths. So this is $11. But hold on to your hats, folks. Look at that. This was just what happened from dropping, getting blocks on it, from her carrying her things from place to place. I mean, this is incredibly beautiful. I mean, it's insanely beautiful. So I don't know what's going to go on this yet, but it's going to be something spectacular because... That's just so clever. It's so smart. And I promise I'm not affiliated other than I just love her things. Okay, so then I told myself, don't even look. Don't even look. Don't look. Same thing, don't look. I looked. And I snagged an 18 count, and this is an 18 by 29. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I could not pass it up. It is hot pink. Hot pink, and it's way blowing it out. Way blowing it out. Let me put if I get the white tag in there. That's a really good. <sighs> so tell me if you know some cutesy pattern. Fun stitch. I mean, I could obviously do something like ink circles on it or long dog or something fun, but what? To really highlight the fabric, but also to have a cute pattern. All right, so then also from this week, this is a 16 count, and this one's really chunky. Like, stiff or chunky. I think this is a Charles Craft, maybe. I can't remember. But again, Sucker for Gray. And this is the 16 count. I have a ton of 18. I love 18. But I'm trying to build up my stash of 16. This is 16. And this is an 18 by 30 inch piece. So again, this will get me a couple of even decent sized projects. So really pretty gray. And I'm sure you can see the price tags. She is incredibly reasonable. Her shipping is reasonable. It comes with candy. Although the last few weeks, my daughter's been exceptionally disappointed because it had been coming with Swedish Fish. She knows. But both these packages came with fireballs. What are those? The red ones that are like, whoa. Warheads. Warheads? I think it came with warheads. I didn't want to go down that path, so I didn't even tell her it came with candy. 
Okay, so then I saw this one. Normally, I don't even go in the opal. But I was thinking, okay, this is a more neutral week. It's with, I think this was a leftover. I think this was a canceled invoice. Because this was very much out of the ordinary. This was a very neutral week, which was exceptional for me. Because I'm loving some neutral stuff. Um, I don't normally go to the opals. But I did. And I'm happy I did. Because I think I found the perfect piece for the V-Fairy. So it's got some pretty shimmer to it. It's got a little bit of a pink undertone, not super like it's pink, but it's got a blushness to it. It's really not showing up. This is not doing it any justice, but it's a good size piece. I think it's going to be more than enough. This is an 18 count um, Ada opal or all Adas. That's a little bit better. You can kind of tell. So anyway, loved all of that. Now, I also got in this week, I had ordered this a while back. I had seen in one of the uh, groups how a, a young woman, or an, a woman, I don't know, young or old, a stitcher, stitcher lady, had been stitching up on, is Ink Circles Flag Day? Anyway, she was stitching it in the DMC Colorist, Colorist line, and it's like a red, white, red, gray, blue, and I was like, yes, have to have it. Loving struggles. Awesome. And so I stumbled upon, I went and I looked for, I think I looked for maybe patriotic hand dyed. I don't know what I looked for. Or I just went to hand dyed by Rwanda because I hadn't been there in a while and I hadn't received anything. So she had some limited edition red, white, and blue. So that is now on my coming soon to be stitched list will be flag day with this. I don't have the chart yet. It is not out of print, so it's not a problem. While I was in there, she had a larger skein. She was selling some of her bigger hanks. And I saw this, and I was like, yep, please. Must have it. Must come home with the patriotic. Because the patriotic, even though there were three of them, they still could not travel just alone. So we got turquoise, green, navy. So beautiful. Rwanda does a fantastic job dying. This right here, this transition, I cannot wait to see that stitch up. I don't know what this is going to be for. I'm always up open to suggestions of some cute patterns for that. And then the very last thing, I told you this was not much stash. More fabric than anything else. And good thing because I've got all my nonsense out in the middle of my living room. More to add to it. Um, I was in Stash Unload, I think. And somebody had posted some of their patterns. And this one came up, and this is the Sampler Company, a design by Brenda Keys. And this is the Sampler Houses. I would love it if it didn't have glare. And so I thought this would be kind of cool to, again, change my initials in the top border. Put the, do the year in another border. And then on this other side, even maybe highlight my husband's initials in one color. Um, and then my daughter's in another color. So I thought that'd be kind of cool. And then even since there's two sets of numbers, do like the year we bought our house and then the year, the current year. And I even thought, what, cause of course I'm going to convert this a bit. My thought was to convert, there's, um, to convert one of these houses to look like ours. So that was my thought. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. I thought it was a neat pattern. I love that it comes with, um, I'm going to try to show this without showing the chart, too much of the chart. It comes with a stitched by in the year, so you can put that on your frame. And then it comes with um, a separate card, so like you can take this with you when you go shopping. And it has the colors. It is charted in DMC. It is considered an intermediate skill level. Um, it is charted in, or suggested such an 18 count even weave so my Ada will be perfect it ends up being about 12 by 12 when finished so I'm excited about that one no plans on when to actually start it obviously the converting will take some time I might need to get through my Christmas Christmas tree farmhouses first I also have Prairie Schooler Village Sampler which is similar to this and I also have Rosewood Manor's Quaker Village. So I have quite a number of projects with houses. So really though, let me check my bucket to make sure I don't forget anything this week. 
I think that's about it. So we have talked weekly update from me. We've talked about my swap. We've talked about, oh, giveaway, subscriber giveaway. Remember, I would like to stitch. I'm going to give you one more, more time. This is the tea tree. I would like to stitch the arbor. A-R-B-O-R, because I will search for it. I would like to stitch the garden. This is a ship's manner. Um, I would like to stitch the dots. And this is a, remember, a 32 count Belfast. I would like to stitch the A. That's all she wrote, folks. I hope you have a great week. Um, thank you for sticking around if you did to this point. Bonus points. Um, as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in subscribing and you are not already subscribed, I would appreciate it. You can always turn on that little bell to get a notification. I post on Fridays or try to on Fridays or they sometimes go up live on Saturdays. Um, I am on Instagram, so come check me out. Um, I do post things. In fact, I've got to post, I've got to take official pictures of Mary and Bright and get that posted. Um, and I probably will insert some of those pictures at the end of this video for you to see. And, 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 I said I was going to cut down on the number of ands. Mm -mm. Hard to believe June is done. Hi, buddy, but it is. And now we got to move on and press on to July. Oh, I forgot. Oh, 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 oh. So the rest of this weekend, I'm going to be working on my temperature quilt, um, which is a pattern that I got from Hetty Record off of Instagram. So I will show you that. I have all of June to stitch. So hopefully by Sunday night, that is all complete. So yeah, it's about 300 and some odd stitches, and I'm excited about it. So yeah, until we, until we chat again, happy stitching. Many blessings on your week ahead, and I hope it's a good one. Bye, guys.